There are so many mini painting myths that you could spend an entire day debunking them. So in this video, I decided to look at some of them while I paint this miniature to see if they are true or not. Myth or fact, you gotta use primer. It would be really stupid to paint an unprimed miniature, right? So let's do just that. You see, a primer is used so the paint sticks to the model better. Maybe when you started miniature painting, you try to apply your paint over unprimed model and you could see that the paint doesn't stick, as if the surface was hydrophobic. And maybe you told yourself, hydrophobic? In this day and age? And then you learned about priming. But the real problem is twofold. For one, miniatures are often greasy from the factory processing. Or, or your sweaty fingers, if you're like me. And two, if you dilute your paint, it has worse adhesion than thick paint. And yes, this is foreshadowing. So if you don't want to prime your model, the solution is simple. I made sure to degrease my model properly using a bit of kitchen soap and an old toothbrush. Now, this model is 3D printed, so it already went through some cleaning, so this will make it even better. Just imagine I was eating butter with my bare hands and touched the model afterwards, or some shit like that. After properly cleaning it and letting it dry, I used Abaddon Black to apply the first layer, which will serve as a primer of sorts. The crucial thing here is to use a bit thicker paint and spread it well. Alright, I don't know why you wouldn't use a primer, but if you really don't wanna prime your minis, you don't have to. Just make sure to degrease your model and use a bit thicker paint. And speaking of which, myth or fact, you gotta use two thin coats. Alright, this might get controversial, so let me explain before you call me a degenerate. Very often Duncan says that you should use two thin coats to base coat your minis, and it quickly became his catchphrase and even people online started sharing this advice everywhere in a half-joking manner. Now when it comes to base coating, this advice isn't bad. In fact, it might be helpful for beginner painters, but in isolation, it lacks a lot of nuance. For example, how much exactly should you dilute your paint? Is two thin coats enough for any color, even white? I mean, when I painted white, it certainly didn't seem like it. Also, does it matter what primer have you used? Furthermore, it's definitely the case that if you dilute your paint too much, it keeps on filling the recesses and you lose the sharp details on the mini, which is exactly what you want to avoid. When you watch Duncan's videos, he actually gives you a great rundown on how to approach this, without over diluting the paint. But even then, it's not how I base coat my miniatures. When I lay down the base coat, I make sure that it covers in one layer. But I spread the paint. In fact, you can use layers that are thick. But if you spread them enough, it's just fine. The problems arise only when you have too much paint in one spot and it clogs the details. And even if the base coat is a bit spotty, which usually doesn't even happen, it's not like that's the only layer I apply anyway. Since I paint everything with multiple layers, it just matters that the base coat is completely and fully opaque in shades. So that means I usually start with thicker layers and make them thinner and thinner the more I refine the miniature. And I guess that's exactly the point. It really depends what your painting approach is. If you prefer this layering approach that I use on my miniatures, you'll find that you need to use many layers of various thickness. And if you use the classic base, shade and highlight approach, then using two thin coats for the base coat is absolutely legit. And you know, this is absolutely nothing against Duncan. I truly appreciate his contribution to mini painting community. This is more aimed towards people who take this advice and make it a mini painting commandment, which of course is wrong. In fact, I have made a video where I painted this particular miniature without using any water to dilute my paint. And I think the outcome is pretty decent. Before we move further, a quick word from our sponsor. The model I painted for this video is a part of an amazing new sci-fi range called Revenant's Run. These minis are intended to be used for One Page Rule's Grim Dark Future, or any other war game. You know which ones. The range consists of two factions, religious sci-fi knights called Knights of the Quantum Accord, and an alliance of rebels, thieves and pirates called Steel Spectres. 
To say that both factions have a crazy amount of sick model options would be an understatement. And you can get them in physical copies or 3D printable files. In fact, they even sent me some of their physical minis and it's kinda incredible that I struggle to find any print lines on them as opposed to minis I printed. The details are super crisp and it also means that you don't need to own a 3D printer. This line of miniatures is really cool, so definitely check them out, there will be a link in the description. And if you are a fan of the channel, there might be a little surprise to release later. And thank you Revenants Run for sponsoring this video. Myth or fact, more contrast equals better result. So when people say that, oh, you definitely gotta increase contrast, bruv, usually it means that you should make the shades darker and the reflections lighter. And there definitely are people who will tell you that more contrast is always better. But let me ask you this, do you want your food to be always just salty? Well, just like flavor, contrast is a quality that miniatures have, but it doesn't mean that it determines the quality. Just like you prefer some of your food to be sweet, some food to be sour, etc., some parts of your minis are better with more contrast and some not so much. Usually when you paint with high contrast, you wanna bring attention to that part or you wanna make it look reflective. But if you paint everything with high contrast, then it'll all just look the same. So because it's just a feature of painting, it might be a good idea to use it intentionally instead of everywhere all the time. You gotta use small brushes to paint details. Now hear me out. It's true that I am using very thin brushes myself for some parts, but 99% of the time you don't need them. This is Da Vinci Maestro size 1 and this is Windsor & Newton size 1 and both of these are good enough to paint the entirety of this miniature, even the smallest details. What really matters is that you have a sharp tip which is able to deliver the paint exactly where you want it to be. If you find that you are not as precise as you would like to, it might be the case that your brush is overloaded, so make sure to wick off the excess to have as much control as possible. If you find that the brush starts losing its tip or the bristles are going crazy, it's still possible to paint like that, but the potential to make happy accidents is higher. However, the bottom line is that as long as you can get a nice tip on your brush and you just paint with the tip, almost always you'll be fine. The instances where I go to lower sizes than size 1 are when I paint eyes, for example. But I bet that you and I could make it even with bigger brushes, if we were careful enough. So save your money, you don't have to buy like 4 different brush sizes, when size 1 will be good for almost everything. There are superior paint brands. It is my genuine opinion that there is no such thing as the best paint brand. Even though there are a few paint brands that I like the most, it's not like I am using just one. That's because different brands have different features, but that doesn't mean that one is better than the other necessarily. For example, you might use AK or Vallejo as your workhorse paint, Chimera if you want a really vibrant result, Citadel if you want a nice satin finish, and Army Painter if you really f***ing hate yourself. <gasps> I'm just joking, Jesus Christ! But seriously, it's absolutely the case that if you have some of the popular paint brands at home, they are good enough. But as I mentioned, since paints do have different features, the way you use them might be different. On this miniature, when it came to its black armor, I used different black for mixing the grayish reflections and Citadel black to deepen the shades. That's because Citadel paints are quite often satin and satin finish makes the color appear deeper. There are plenty of other examples how I integrate different paint brands in my painting, but the point is that paints might be different and that doesn't make them better or worse. And you know, I actually made a video where I compare all the mentioned paint brands and I think that all of them can get results that are barely distinguishable. Even Army Painter? Yes, even Army Painter. You gotta use X technique to get Y result. 
This kind of goes hand in hand with everything I mentioned already. There are so many different approaches to miniature painting that it doesn't make sense to be dogmatic about a certain technique. Whatever you want to paint on your mini, there are multiple ways to go about it. You don't have to know glazing, wet blending, stippling, stipple glazing, loaded brush, underpainting, two-handed overpainting, dry glazing, wet axle gridding, half dry stroking. <laughs> <laughs> or any other f***ing buzzword that's popular at the time. At the end of the day, all that we are doing is pushing pigment on our minis. It doesn't matter what kind of brushstroke you're doing, as long as it gets the job done. For example, I rarely ever use washes on my miniatures, since if you start with a really dark base coat and paint all the reflections, there is no need for it. But the same is true for anything else that you want to paint. I don't ask you guys that often, but I am genuinely curious. What mini painting myths do you know? And why are they wrong? Let me know in the comments. But you know what isn't a myth? There is one certain thing that will improve every miniature you paint once you learn it. And I didn't mention it here. But for you to learn it, you'll have to watch this video. And believe me, it's worth it. And so, see you there. Shout out to Thomas Heen.